Hi, so today how to read a CSV file and how to output a CSV file. So I downloaded a CSV file with uh, the London stations, um, especially with their coordinates. So you just go there and you click on station data CSV and you have your CSV. So if we have a look to the the data. So first field is the station name. So first one is Abbey Road, for instance. And then you have you have uh, OS X and OS Y, which is the the easting and the northing, which is just a um, GPS representation. And then you have the classic GPS latitude and longitude. Uh, and then you have the zone, which is uh, just um, uh, TFL uh, Train London. Um, uh, zone and then you have the the UK postcode basically. Let's try to make it uh, realistic. So we will write a program which is um, which which reads this CSV file, grab the GPS coordinates, and if we give this program um, GPS coordinate, uh, it will try to output a CSV with uh, the ordered uh, stations by the closest. Starting with uh, building our data structure, so we need a struct, so we can call it a type station. And then we are only interested in the field name, so name as a string. And then we're going to use a Golang tag, so CSV, and then the name in the CSV station. And then we're going to do that for uh, latitude and longitude. So you can see that it's very similar to how we parse um, JSON. So then uh, latitude, longitude, and then with the associated tag. We don't care about OSX, OSY, and the zone and the postcode. So then uh, we need to read a file. So we're just going to use the inbuilt uh, IO util uh, library. And you can see that my file is in tube stations.csv. So basically from that method we have um, we have bytes and an error. So uh, classic error handling that you might have already seen. So if the error is non-null, we can just raise it. Otherwise we can carry on um, using the bytes. So for that I'm gonna use the go CSV library. So uh, we can use the method uh, called unmarshal um, bytes because we've got the bytes from the previous methods like that. And then you can see that it's also taking an interface as second argument. So um, our um, second argument is basically a slice of station, which is the struct we built um, previously. And then you can just send a pointer to that. So this method is giving you back an error. So just for the sake of simplicity, um, I'm just going to ignore it. But you have to do exactly the same thing as line uh, 16 to 18, basically. So then uh, just to double check that the, the parsing is working, the unmarshalling is working, we can just print the first station, which should be uh, Abbey Road. Can run the program. And then uh, you can see indeed that the, the first uh, element of the slice is Abbey Road with the GPS coordinate. OK, so then that was the first part. So straightforward, really um, similar to how we parse um, JSON. I pinned a point in uh, Greenwich Park in London. So you can see the GPS coordinates uh, there. Um, so let's try to find what's the closest uh, station from that uh, GPS uh, coordinate. So to start with, we just need to compute um, the, the distances and um, then order them. So I'm uh, building this um, struct position, which is just um, holding uh, latitude and longitude as float. So then we can um, define our uh, variable called target as um, position with um, latitude 51 and longitude uh, minus 0 whatever and then uh, we want to compute the distance 
So for that, we're going to use a harvesting formula. So that you can find that on Wikipedia and you can find a straightforward implementation if you want. Uh, there's no point for me to explain in details um, to you um, coordinate geometry. So um, I put the links. So if you're interested, have a look to the articles and the um, formulas. But here it is. So basically, uh, we've got a function distance, which is taking uh, a point P and a point Q. And then it's computing um, the distance in um, kilometer. So then uh, we can just build a slice um, of uh, distances. So then um, uh, we can use the constructor method called make. And then it's going to be the length of your station because we want to compute one distance per uh, station and then we can just wrench over over our station slice so basically the the distance the at the index uh, i is the um, the result of the distance function basically and the distance function is using uh, the, as first point the our target point, and then as second point um, the the current uh, station GPS coordinates. So then position uh, station latitude, and then station uh, longitude. Right. So here there's a compile um, error. So it's just that when we declared our structure to uh, read the CSV, we put um, as a latitude and longitude string, whereas position is um, is holding uh, floats. So then we can just change that in our um, first struct basically by replacing float by uh, sorry replacing string by float. There you go. Um, okay, so um, as usual, let's just double check that uh, so far so good. So let's just print the first um, element of this slice and uh, distance that we just built. So the first one should be the distance between um, our point to uh, Abbey Road Station. So 5.8 kilometer. So that sounds okay. Nothing crazy. We can check on Google Maps afterwards. Okay, we can improve a bit the, the data structure because uh, we know that we want to output the, those distances into a CSV uh, with the name of the station. So we can build a struct called uh, output station. So first thing we need is the name of the station. So name as a string. And then uh, we can use again the, the um, uh, golang tag CSV and then uh, it's entirely up to us because we are the one this time which who are outputting the CSV so we can use station um, colon name for the first uh, field and simply distance for the second one which is distance uh, as a float so then instead of building um, a slice of uh, floats we can just build a um, slice of output stations and then just do some renaming. So basically, when we loop through the station slice, um, we are uh, filling the output stations slice. So then um, uh, for one station, we want to build the name from the station name. So the name of an output is the name of the input. And then the distance is just um, we are just invoking uh, and storing the result of our distance function, basically. OK, so now uh, let's try to sort uh, this slice of station um, with by the closest station from our target point. So we're going to use the inbuilt, inbuilt library uh, sort and use the slice stable uh, method. So basically, this method is um, just a sort, but uh, you can send um, a custom attribute to sort against and here we want to sort by distance so um, it's comparing the distance from an element i against the element uh, j basically 
we can double check that so uh, let's um, print the uh, first element of the uh, out output stations and let's run that and it's maze hill uh, five, 500 meters so that sounds uh, legit because maze hill is here so looks like the closest indeed okay so now um, so we have our slice to output so let's just uh, create um, a file so I'm just gonna place it in uh, this folder tube and uh, we can name it as closest uh, stations uh, .csv for instance and then we're gonna use the same um, library oh yeah so let's um, ignore the error and um, you can just use uh, the error uh, pattern line 32 to 33 and then um, let's use the same library as I said so it's go csv dot marshall file where you need to send an interface so we want to marshal our output stations uh, slice and then we are uh, marshalling to the file we just created we can run that and you can see that uh, it has generated a csv there with a station underscore name and distance and then you can see maze hill QTSOC, and greenwich so so on google maps uh there you have um maze hill and then you have a uh, QTSOC here and you have uh, the Greenwich station here so you can see that uh, it's pretty accurate so you saw that um, and marshalling and marshalling um, CSV files are very very similar uh, as um, marshalling and unmarshalling uh, JSON files basically really straightforward and um, very idiomatic so um, all the links are in the descriptions. Um, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, realistic example as well. And um, thanks for watching and happy coding.